This is the first USB hub I ever owned. Uh, I bought it at a local computer store. Uh, I didn't pay any attention to the brand, I didn't really know or care at the time. Uh, and uh, it's apparently an IROX. And it's the model number UH400, a serial number 008293. Uh, oh, I don't know how old this thing must be, but it it has to be purchased somewhere around 2006, 2007, something like that. It, it's the better part of 10 years old, and it's just been an excellent device. Uh, it's probably the most lasting computer peripheral I've ever owned, and uh, basically every video I've ever uploaded to YouTube has passed through this thing at one stage or another. Uh, so, when I notice that you can still buy these today, uh, I have co I could not resist. This one was relatively expensive, I got it just the other day, and it was about 18 euros including a USB cable and an AC adapter. And uh, on the surface it seems to be very similar, very similar indeed. Uh, down to the sticker being almost identical, this one's serial number. Uh, 16040226, so it's got a lot more digits in it. But we've got these very similar character characteristics uh, across the board. And uh, the new one's got a uh, slightly more wonky USB connector. We have the same DC input. And th th they're obviously using the same case, but I really want to know uh, if these are going to be the same on the inside. And uh, since the screw for disassembling these seems to be there, and just a single screw it seems, I have never actually had the original one apart either, so it's going to be a bit interesting to see what's actually inside these. Because th the reliability in this has just been insane. Uh, the number of plugs these USB connectors have seen is, is just staggering. They're absolutely staggering. I've expected this thing to fail every day for the last five years or so. But, uh, I guess nothing. Well, up in closer inspection, that's not a screw hole, but rather just a moulding mark. Ah, well, I guess these just uh, crack open then. Yep. There we go. So that's the inside of the old one, and we've got a pretty tidy layout with some kind of regular regulator looking thing there and an actual branded IC. So the regulator seems to be just a run of a mill, the 1117 3.3 volt. And the IC is a GL850A MS2DC03G06638866347. And everything looks really quite well made. Uh, solder joints and USB ports even look just fine even after all these years. I'm honestly surprised. I was ex I, I, I was actually expecting these uh, uh, solder joints to have failed a long time ago, but no, they're still intact. That's not bad. They look all shiny and stuff. Oh, there we go. It's date code 0641. Made in China. So this thing is uh, just about 10 years old. Almost 10 years old. Who knows, when you're reviewing this it might be 10 years old already. So that's the inside of, an, of the old one. Now let's see if we've got the same stuff in the new one. I'm quite sadly expecting this to have been turned into just a blob on the PCB. Right here, the new one comes apart just the same way since the case is identical and that's made a cracking noise and yep we've got an entirely different design that is definitely not the same hardware so let's have a closer look it seems to get the top cover off you need to be ever so slightly more violent these snaps seem to be a little bit stronger nature than the bottom flaps flaps snaps but it's coming there we go we actually do have an IC, so let's have a bit of a look. Oh, would you look at that? We've got the same chips, so just in another capsule. 
Oh, that's, that's a relief. Then perhaps this is going to work just as well as the old one. Ah, oh, it makes me all giddy. So, what do we have? We have a... What's that? 12 megahertz crystal. A series diode for the external power feed. Do we have a date code somewhere? Doesn't seem like it. What's that? A 100 microfarad cap. Especially mm, polyfuse, maybe? A bit dodgy on those two resistors, but yeah, it gets a pass. Doesn't look too bad, honestly. So, for comparison, here comes the top side of the board for the old one. And uh, we've pretty much got the same stuff, except we've got the two polyfuses there, a surface main diode, and. Uh, yeah, that's a 12 megahertz crystal as well. And we've got another cap there. That's a 35 volt 100 microfarad. So that's probably just across the external DC input. And this one over here is going to be across the USB input. That might be the leading cause as to why this has worked so well. It's got quite hefty capacitance on the input at 4.7 microfarad. Do we get an input capacity on the new one? No, it doesn't seem to. We just got that one. I hope it's not as shared between both inputs because there's a diode in series for one of them. Nah, no, this has to be just in parallel with the external input. Maybe it's just in parallel with the ports. I'll have to check. Yep, when you have a closer look at the hair, <laughs> it traces, it's quite obvious that uh, this capacitor is just in parallel with the rail for all the USB ports, so uh, there isn't really a, any primary cap, so to speak. Oh, well, I'm not certain what difference that makes. It's good to have capacitance for when you hook those pesky high current devices in. Curiously though, when we look at the old one, uh, the one of the caps seems to just be snaking its way in underneath the chip somewhere, and the other one is just kind of... Uh, straight across the 5 volt input, it seems. So the old one actually doesn't seem to have any real uh, capacitance to couple through the ports. That's a bit of a surprise. I mean, this capacitor is going to be all, uh, all but useless when it's uh, running uh, off of the USB port. And we've got a diode in series with the 5 volts input. It's uh, not going to be able to charge this capacitor and use it for anything. I don't think. Yep, I just beeped it out and neither of these two caps are uh, straight across the USB ports. That's weird. Uh, this one's straight across the external 5 volt supply, uh, which I think is more or less uh, straight across these USB ports, but it's through the polyfuses and not really. It's, it's not really too strongly connected, but I suppose it works. Since this USB hub has been working so absolutely great for so long, I, I really can't fault it, but I'm a bit surprised I would have been. Uh, more prepared to see a layout like this, in, like when you and whether have just got the big caps straight across the ports. Oh well, well no, they, they really do seem to be quite similar though, the USB ports look uh, relatively similar. I'm not certain if they're the same quality or not, I guess only time will tell. But there you go, I just wanted to share this since I was so surprised to see uh, that anybody would actually make it something as banal as a USB hub in the same case for an entire decade. I mean, that's pretty insane. And this, you know, it's, it's not a particularly attractive uh, or special design or anything, it's just your run of a mill USB hub. Oh, fascinated. There you go. Thank you for watching. Now oh, I forgot that I'm contractually obliged to take the AC adapter apart. 
uh, this is a real European sole product, so I'm expecting the inside of this to be uh, tested, approved and safe for use. Uh, this is going to be a proper CE mark, all these markings are going to be, you know, proper, not Chinese clones. Even though this and after, it's made by Shenzhen Fujia Appliance Company Limited. Uh, it puts out 5 volts at 2 amps, but let's just get this apart and have a little look inside. <laughs> that took quite a bit more uh, effort than I was uh, expecting, and since it wasn't even uh, glued, it was just a, a snapshot. Whoops. Yep, this would <laughs> this would not have required any force at all to get apart. Oh well. So what do we have? A bit less in here than I was expecting, actually. Uh, dated 2013. And is this going to pop off? Yeah, it's one of those contact things, but yeah. Very proper isolation there. And suppression cap, optocoupler, heatsink transistor. So then we've got a little switching IC, a few diodes, passives, nothing. Nothing particularly exciting going on. Capacitors, what's that? Ox cap? No, it's OK cap. OK. And do we have any other silly brands? Uh, nothing easily readable. Or they all seem to be OK cap except for this one, which is a Cheng X, so nothing particularly exciting. I've got a little common mode rejection choke, a little choke on the output. All looking pretty good in here, I must say. Nothing really worth complaining about. You don't know how the transformer is on the inside, but have I even gone to the effort of wrapping around it like that? So, whoa, that's that's not very sturdy remainder at all. That's moving around. That's weird. Very weird. Oh, ha! It seems my violencing with a hammer has uh, broken the traces straight off the board. Uh, the transformers now just uh, <laughs> uh, flapping in the breeze, as some would say. Whoops. Well, that doesn't really speak for the quality of a PCB. I've never had this issue with any other product, and I quite frequently use the hammer to get uh, AC adapters apart. That's not very impressive at all. We've got Shenzhen Fujia. Brand on the transformer and a part number two, FJT1 and 126-T1. So aside from falling apart when bashed with a hammer, I think this power supply is just fine, as it would be since it's being sold in Europe by a reputable retailer. So nothing exciting, decent quality power supply, bad caps, not going to last for too long, but it's going to be safe for as long as it lasts. Cheerio. Ah, there we go. All pack put back together and reinforced with some uh, experimental wire. That's looking pretty okay. I think this thing might just live again. I couldn't bear myself just ruining a new nice product like this. No, sorry, Bob. I'm feeling pretty confident putting this back online, or rather testing it for the first time, I actually didn't even know whether or not it uh, worked before doing this. And well, let's see. Alright, here we go, 150 volts coming in. What? Or else I'd read it about 100 more broken pads on the board, so let's give it another go. Well, it's doing more. Alright, I removed a short from one of the transformer pins to a trace just adjacent to it that had actually scraped some of the solder mask off of. So let's give it another go and hope that it does something. Come on. Alright, so, uh, after a bit more probing around this thing, I've literally put about two hours of work into repairing this. Uh, uh, I found out that we were getting half a volt on the output because the power adapter was going into tick mode. Uh, and uh, uh, looking more at that, uh, I noticed that uh, th there was nothing really going on around the optocoupler on the secondary side. So, uh, 
And if that, I find that to be a bit odd, it shouldn't be going into tick mode unless where you have an over voltage situation on the secondary to trigger the optocoupler to turn the converter off. So I then started looking at the uh, primary side of the optocoupler and I noticed there was no real voltage there ever. And then I noted that uh, the heatsink pad, it was uh, a trace going both directions, not only patched it one direction. And I'm pretty certain, after having fixed that issue, that this thing is going to give me 5 volts now. So here we go. This is attempt number I don't even know. Oh yes. That's a good 5 volts. Excellent. So I guess the moral of the story is uh, don't hit your electronics with hammers unless you wish for them to break. Cheerio.